welcome. This is a um, gentle yoga class and we're gonna focus on um, shoulders and that sort of stuff. So we're gonna start lying down. And the way that I'm gonna begin um, is I'm gonna use, I'm trying to decide, I think I'll use the pillow. So you could also do this with a blanket. So I'm gonna put this pillow down the length of my spine. If you don't have a pillow that kind of works like this, um, a blanket would be a good alternative. Now, if you have a thicker blanket, you, once you roll it up, it might actually be closer to that sort of size. If you've got a thinner blanket like this one, then you just roll it up and put it down the length of your spine in the same way. Okay, so just kind of choosing for yourself which option you think will be better. You can also use two yoga blocks, one underneath your shoulders and one underneath your head to achieve a similar result. Oh. Now, oh. generally for me, I like the blanket or a pillow to wind up about at the bottom of my rib cage, oh, not much lower than that. It feels like it's nicer to have a little bit of space between the rib and my lower back so that my low back can kind of do its own thing and doesn't get pushed around by a pillow. Um, but if you're using the blocks, you'll want that block much higher up. It'll be right under the shoulder blades and not down under your ribs um, beyond that. Okay, I'm gonna do this little butterfly thing with my legs, but you can have straighter legs <laughs> or you can keep your feet on the floor um, and uh, hang out with constructive rest as well. <laughs> So just kind of choosing one of those, <laughs> one of those options. Oh. Oh. And then the theory is, is that we're going to relax. So my shoulders are having this opportunity to sort of fall slightly over the edges of this pillow. So that gives this kind of broadening sensation across the chest. If I keep my arms in kind of close to the body, this settling is a little more subtle and I feel it mostly in the little shoulder stabilizing muscles. If I were to take my arms out wider, then I include the big pec minor muscle across my chest, which is a lot more sensation. It's closer to the surface. Um, so that's an option as well. So you kind of, you can feel it out whether you want it to be a little more subtle or a little spicier in the sensation into the world. Take nice, deep, smooth breaths. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Stick around for about another minute, just letting the body relax over this shape. Bring my knees together first, then just slide the legs out. If your legs are already straight, you might not need to worry about that particular 
option. Now, while I'm still propped up on this pillow, I'm gonna stretch my arms over my head and let the backs of my arms lengthen just a little bit. I'm just kind of stretching into those triceps a notch. It's a nice opportunity. <laughs> Alrighty, now coming off the pillow, I'm gonna return to my back Oh, and I'm leaving my feet on the floor. I'm going to do these little kind of windshield wiper moves, and then I'm going to add onto it a little bit of release for my upper back. So to do this, I kind of have to curl my navel in and my tailbone up just a notch to flex my spine so that this upper part of my back sort of presses into the floor a little bit more. Oh, and then stretching my arms out so my shoulder blades come around the edges. I can get to that muscle area where the... Oh, <laughs> right between my shoulder blades. Oh, feels good. Oh, it's not an easy area to massage <laughs> for yourself. Someone else can definitely do it for you, but not on yourself. But using the floor kind of helps. All right, so now I'm just sort of windshield wiping it back and forth with the hips, with the legs, and testing out, do I like that twist a little bit more or this one first start? So I'm going to go to the right to start. Oh. And then let yourself know you can wrap your legs one around the other. You can add a little support. We're going to let ourselves settle into this uh, twist or, yeah. <laughs> Again, I can increase the amount of sensation by moving my arm a little further out to the side. I can um, decrease it by putting the arm maybe down a little lower. You can turn the head towards the arm or towards the knees. One more breath here and then come on back to the center. Oh. Now, oh. all right, so we've got a constructive rest position. I waited for my spine to sort of settle a little bit so it doesn't feel like I'm still twisting in that first direction. We're gonna take the arms about like, I don't know, pointing directly at the ceiling, kind of level with the chest, and then reach around and grab hold. So I went to the right, so my left leg was up on top. So I'm gonna grab my left arm, pull that across to the right, and then I'm gonna try to pull that left shoulder blade back down into my back and even towards the floor. So my arm's not gonna move much but there's this really nice sensation of release under the shoulder blade. Ooh, so I'm pulling with the same amount of force in both directions, the arm toward the right and the shoulder blade down and into the back. And you might move your arm up or down a little bit to kind of find the right angle for you. Two more breaths. release the arm, give it a little shimmy. Now we're going to keep going with the same arm, but rather than the twist, we're going to roll all the way to that, onto that right side or whatever side it was for you. For me, it's the right. Okay. So with the arms kind of resting out parallel to each other, I'm going to make a big circle with this same arm I've been working with this left side. So reaching out. Now, if when you come around the bottom here, there's some numbness or tingling or things that happen in your shoulder that feel like you're pinching nerves, there's two options. The first option is to stop right before that and just come straight across to start back up and do just a semicircle. The other option is to let your arm hang out with a higher um, angle. Oh, I'm going to do that one more time. 
nice big circle stretching into all the edges and then just let myself come all the way back okay so pause for a moment see if you can feel a difference between the two arms we've just done a bunch of kind of twisty things you might be able to feel that left over in your spine <laughs> one side might be a little different than the other so I'm coming back to where I started, which was with these little windshield wipers where I let the hip come up. So I'm just gonna do those again. And then I started with my legs going to the right. So of course, to do the second side, I'm gonna take my legs to the left into the twist. And again, you can wrap the legs around each other, or just leave them kind of resting one on top of the other. Choose how the arm positions. Choose whether your head goes towards the outside arm <laughs> or in the same direction as your legs. And once you have a reasonable shape, we're just gonna settle in, let the body relax a bit. Take some nice deep breaths. Do a little more passive with this one. more breaths. And then I'm coming back to the center again. I'm going to pause for just a moment, sort of let my spine unwind. And then grab and hold of that right upper arm. I'm going to pull the arm across to the left and then secure the shoulder blade back into the socket there. <laughs> back onto my back. There's resistance going in both directions. It's about even. I've got one more breath here. And then essentially, I'm just going to do the same thing. So I'm going to take myself right back over onto my left side. Make sure I've got room so I can stretch through the right arm all the way around. I do this last one I'm gonna come back around to that kind of semicircle and just let it bring me all the way back okay now <laughs> we're just gonna take a moment and notice oh, do the shoulders feel a little more even the arms feel more even how did it go so usually like this little combination is really, I find it really lovely. Normally it feels like, I'm exaggerating just a little bit so it shows up on camera, but normally it feels like my 
arm bone wants to lean forward. And when I'm done with that, it feels like it sort of settles a little more back into the um, shoulder blade itself. There's a little more a broad sensation across the chest, which I find nice. Now that's the part we're gonna emphasize next. So basically we're just gonna flip ourselves upside down. And we're gonna use the resistance of the mat. So we're gonna push the hands down and kind of pull against the mat a bit. And you're gonna use your legs nice and firm. So starting with the hands up close to the top of the shoulder, we're just gonna roll the shoulder blades a few times. Three or four in one direction. And then three or four in the other direction, trying to get some movement in the shoulder blades themselves. Then anchor through the legs and lift. And then pressing the palms down, we're gonna really pull back, trying to broaden out the chest, work the upper back. Okay, come on back down, slide your hands back about an inch or so, shoulder circles. In both directions if you can. I definitely find one direction easier than the other. And then lifting into Cobra, really drawing back. Beautiful, one more time. Hands slide back a little, shoulder circles. Both directions. Cobra. Okay. Now, <laughs> come into a crocodile. We're gonna put one palm on, or one forearm on top of the other. You can have more of an, an X or more of just kind of parallel lines. Rest your forehead on your um, wrist, maybe, forearm. You can also do your chin instead. And then we're gonna stretch the legs. So we're gonna lift one leg into locust and we're trying not to roll onto the side. Try to keep this hip on the floor if you can. Lift the leg and then the other side. Leg lengthen, then the other side. We'll do each one twice more. And then take yourself back to child's pose. Or if child's pose isn't right, just hang out with that crocodile. I'm just using child's pose as an opportunity to kind of shift positions. We're gonna to come to a seated position. So I'm sort of adding some little cat shapes. <laughs> you can also settle into child's pose and just do a little wobble or just pause. And then when you're ready, come to a seated position. Now you might wanna sit up on the edge of a blanket or something along that line. So you've got a little bit more um, support for your spine. So sometimes when we sit on the ground, it, everything's fine. The pelvis has a neutral position, spine has all of its neutral curves, right? Whatever that is for you. But sometimes the pelvis tends to wanna to lean back because for whatever reason, tight hamstrings, tight glutes, something along that line. Um, so sitting elevated will help level the pelvis out. So whatever it takes to get that level. And then just relax your shoulders. Oh. Now we're gonna do some little stretches with the neck. I'm gonna start with some movement side to side just because it helps me tune in to these different muscles. So there's one that connects the skull to the collarbone and actually the breastbone as well. And that's in the front here. And then there's one that connects the back of the skull to the shoulder blade. So as you move your head back and forth, see if you can sort of feel those two places and make a decision about whether you think one side is tighter than the other, if they're both the same. Is there any tension in one particular muscle versus the other? On either side. So I'm gonna start with the muscle that I perceive to be the tightest, and then I'm gonna move towards the least tight. 
Okay. So the muscles that I perceive to be the tightest, and I think this has to do with the way that I sleep, is this right um, front muscle, sternocleidomastoid, and then the left, um, levator scapulae. So this left muscle that holds the scapula to my skull. So those two, I think it's largely because they stabilize each other, right, on either side. That's why I'm perceiving those as being tighter. So I'm gonna let this front one go first, then I'm gonna play with the left side over here, then I'm gonna switch and do the, the opposite too. Now you can do this in any order that you want. Now, so what I'm gonna try to do is get the back of my skull right behind my ear away from my collarbone. So on the right side, I've taken my head to the left. I find it helpful to kind of turn the chin up and down and try to find the just right amount. And then I'm pulling the collarbone to the degree I can over to the right. Okay, so now I'm gonna bring my shoulder back and I'm gonna send my head forward and stretch this left side out. And again, you might stay all on the one side. You might do the two front muscles and then the two back muscles. Just go in whatever order you perceive them to be tight, starting with the tightest and moving to the least tight. I'm gonna move to this front part of my left. to this back side on the right. Take one more breath, and then I'm gonna come back to the center. And then the hope is oh, that we'll find just a little bit more of a sense of freedom around the neck, and that it'll feel like the skull kind of <laughs> hangs out a little more easy on the bones there on the spine. That's my hope. Oh. All right, we're gonna do a little hip opening sequence. We'll add a little um, shoulder thing to that. So we're gonna start with the deer pose. So I've got one leg up front making kind of a 90 degree angle, the other leg here in the back making a 90 degree angle. I'm gonna lean myself a little bit forward towards this leg. So I've got these blocks here. So I'm gonna take my, my right leg is up front. So I'm gonna put my left elbow on the bottom and put my right elbow on top. And essentially I'm just trying to crisscross those elbows you could, if your arms will do it, add this little eagle portion, but you can keep it a little more simple and just sort of wrap the hands around toward the back. And so I've got one arm on top of the other trying to draw the elbows towards each other. Holding on to this little hip opener. Three more breaths here. And 
now I'm gonna open up the arms, bring this leg around from the back, put it up front. Now you can put your shins on top of each other, you can sit cross-legged, you can do knees on top of each other. I'm gonna do this kind of hybrid with a block and just kind of draw my legs closer together. And then once I've established, like sometimes you want to sit up, some people might want to lean back, some people might want to lean forward. So once I've gotten there, I'm going to wrap that arm that was on the bottom. So it was the left arm. Now my left leg's on top, but I'm going to bring my left arm around behind me. You can, if you want to, throw your right arm over the top um, and catch hands, but I cannot catch hands, so I'm just going to do the left. Ow! <laughs> This one thinks that the best way to invite me to play is to bite the crap out of my hand. It's not a good invitation though. <laughs> I'm sure it is in ferret them. Uh, ow, stop. <laughs> uh, hopefully at your house it's not so complicated. Just breathe. <laughs> we got about three more breaths with this shape. <laughs> arm, oh, release this leg, pause in the center, oh. <laughs> and then we'll do the same thing but on the opposite side. So set myself up for a deer. Now my left leg's up front so I'm going to put the right elbow on the bottom and fold forward. Your sister went upstairs. Oh. Back to you guys. <laughs> Take some deep breaths. We're hanging out for just a bit longer. Two more breaths here. the shape. Bring this guy around and again you decide how to best position your hip and then that arm is going to go behind my back in whatever way it will. It's a little tighter on this side than on the other side for sure. Two more breaths here. And then come up, lean back a bit, unwind that arm, unwind the leg, and then oh, oh, after <laughs> a bit, a bit of a rinse in the shoulders, a little bit of a rinse in the hips. We're going to do a final relaxation for a few minutes. Now, you could do legs up the wall, throw your legs up over a couch. Um, I am going to just lie down <laughs> in my favorite version of Shavasana where I put my legs up over a pillow and I've got a blanket. Oh, because it's a little chilly, I'm going to put it across my shoulders. So, you might want oh, a little happy baby or something along that line, uh, just before you settle in, some little windshield wipers, whatever you like best. And then let the legs relax in whatever way is appropriate, again, with or without a pillow. And then 
let your arms kind of rest. So I'm gonna snuggle my shoulder blades under me and then find the right spot for my arms away from the body. We're not trying to hug the arms in tight. That's why I like a little blanket. So then I can keep them a little warm without trying to hug them up close. <laughs> Try to let that shoulder really relax back into the floor. Let your face relax, let your eyes grow a little kinder, your lips a little softer. And try to let ourselves sink in a bit. a moment, tune into your breath. And just feel the body breathing. Sometimes I like to notice that at the navel. Sometimes I pay attention to the rib cage moving. Sometimes my favorite spot is right at the tips of the nostrils. Just pick a spot and pay attention. Take a really deep breath. Let it go with a sigh. <sighs> Stretch and wiggle your fingers and toes, wrist and ankles, <laughs> whole body. Oh. And then when you're ready, you can bring yourself to a seated position. to each other for now. Mm. Mm. Just getting my namaste warmed up for you yogis. <laughs> Take a big breath. Big sigh. Thank you for connecting with me today and doing a little yoga. Namaste everyone. Mm. Enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs>